Welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode we're continuing our playthrough of Blackout Hong Kong from Eggert Spiel. Um, if you remember, if you watched the uh, first episode, um, we had just finished turn one, uh, and then we're going to now move on to turn two. Um, did a lot more explaining in the first one, so these are going to move a little quicker as we just play through the game. I'll explain anything new where it's necessary. So the first thing we're going to do is bring our marker back down to the start and follow our instructions. So we're going to roll resource dice, play in cards. So we take the resource dice off the rondelle. All our previous uh, resources stay in play. And we're going to roll the dice. All right, so again, we got, uh, this time we got fuel is yellow, blue is medicine, and red is food. Okay, so we'll take a quick check, a uh, recap of where we are in terms of objectives. To complete this uh, two resource red objective, we have uh, need one uh, knowledge and one food and then to complete one level of secure the pharmacy we need one knowledge and two um, supplies or two knowledge and one supply and you can complete those in any order uh, that you like so that's where we are looking at our current card stacks here we've got a yellow and a purple in row, we've got two blues and a red in a row, and we've got a single red. So keeping in mind that to open up our fourth slot, we need two purples and two yellows, and ten money. And to be able to refresh our cards at six and under, we need two blues, two reds, and a uh, four of any of the same resource. You can use wildcard resources to add to that, but you cannot. It's not four of any resource, it's four of a resource. So, Okay, so first, the next step is to plan our cards. So looking at the cards we currently have in our hand, we have our scout. And we have our mechanic. Gives us some money. We've got a double blue and a double yellow. So to get a double blue resource, we would end up with two medical. And to get a double yellow, we would end up with double fuel. We have two fuel from claiming a uh, search token in the uh, previous turn. So what we could do here is, I think, I'm going to play this yellow card to get two more of the fuel. And I'm going to go ahead and play that in this row here. Oh, i got to put it upside down. Sorry. Because that tells you... Um, I kind of misstated it last time. The reason you play them upside down is because anything that's already face up has already been played. So you play them face down, flip them over, resolve them, and then those cards kind of sit there. Um, so my goal here is to get four of a resource and to end up with blue, blue, red, red in that column. But you know what? I don't have another red card at the moment. So that is not going to serve me well. And I could have had four resources right there. Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. And you can have more cards, so I can play something else in that column this turn and wait until next turn. But I'm also going to play three cards, and we end up with two cards to carry over to the next turn, and I still won't have a red. And when you play them, you have to take one of the ones that has the most in it. So I'm going to show you a little strategy option here, and we'll see how this gets us moving. I know I'm going to need some money. And the mechanic here will let me get money straight up for three because I want to be able to buy uh, a resource card in that phase. So I'm just going to play that card there. But then I still take 
cards up, I'm only going to be getting yellows back and not a red. Okay. So we need to rethink this, I believe. I think I need to get this card somehow. And to do that, I need some knowledge and I need some food. So let's pull back and rethink. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that this turn. So, so let's focus on what we can do, and that's getting more resource protection coming in. So I need a book, and I need a food. All right, I need a knowledge, and I need a food. So to get to a knowledge, I would need to play my blue and move it using a transport token, and that would move it one. So we're going to do that, I think. So I'm going to take the blue card, and I'm going to go ahead and throw it. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and throw it into this column because I don't think I'm going to be able to last without taking this back this turn. But I'll start another red blue option to maybe carry me forward into the next turn. So that's one option, and I'll play a transport token, and I'll move them over here for that. And then I need to get some, uh, what's the other thing I need here? I need food. Well, to get food, if I play the yellow, I'm going to have to lose two transport tokens to move. And then the extra food will get wasted. So I'm going to take a gamble here and just play my one yellow. And I'm going to play that. I'm going to play that on this pile here. Where I'm still trying to get two purples and two yellows. So now I've got it, I'll have a purple and two yellows at this stage. And then I'm going to go ahead and play, as before, the mechanic to get some money. And then these two stay in my hand. It's not going to leave me enough. It's only going to leave me two points for searching. And that's not going to be good enough. So that's going to be bad. So, alright. So we have planned our cards. Deploy volunteers. So. Okay, so this doesn't really matter too much on our order. So I'm going to take one yellow. And I'm going to, I want food, so I'm going to move it here, and that's going to cost me two transport tokens. So I'm paying those. And then the next step is I'm going to flip the mechanic, and I get three money immediately. Bring that into my tablet. That's Five. Got a little greedy there. Okay, so I got three money. And I cannot afford to pay the parts to get another three, so unfortunately I lose that. And then get two resources of blue. And I'm going to put them on medical, but then I'm going to move them to knowledge. And that's one step, so I have to pay another resource token. Or transport token, excuse me. Okay, so now we're done there. And now we come over to our objectives. And refresher here on the emergency plan that we're trying to work out. We a victory point search token, a fuel search token, which we have already earned there to close that one out. We can't do that yet. We can't, we don't have a pattern of purple, blue, uh, yellow, yellow. Although we could get that on the next turn, hopefully. And we don't have a route to A to A yet, so but we're getting close. Okay, so we'll come back over here and see what we can do. And we're going to go ahead and try for the double red uh, volunteer. We need to pay uh, one knowledge and one food. So from our rondelle, we're going to take one of our knowledge tokens and our one food token. We have now paid the cost. Bring it over here, take this card into our hand. So you will get added here, and uh, we get to place a 
location cube on a red location. Has to be adjacent to one of ours. We can go this one, which we should have done last turn when I made a mistake. Or I can just go ahead and take the A. It's either one, whichever one I want to, because I need to get a, a red one. Uh, and I will probably just go ahead and take this one here at the far end. It's, it doesn't really matter. All right, so I've completed my goals that I can complete this turn. So now we're going to scout. So here's the advantage of scouting, even though I know I can't do anything because I only have three points. I only have three points here. Is I can at least look at something and get a feel for what's there. So this is how you would do that. Because in a multiplayer game, you can still take them and then decide that you're not going to do anything with them. But each player can only take from a single location during the game and during a turn. So you're basically effectively blocking. So um, it's a blocking strategy and for it allows you to look. So we're going to bring this up, take a quick look at these. So we know we got a one for money that would have been four, which would have been great if I could have gotten to it. Spend nine, you get four victory points. There's a victory point marker for me. And spend five and get two supplies. All right, so we can't do any of them because I only have three points at this moment. So we're going to put them back and hopefully I'll remember where they are. It's a memory thing. I mean, you could probably do something where you remember them or write them down, but anyway. So we scouted, we did not take any, we just put them back. All right, so now I've got new objective. So I do have three money. Uh, one, one in a row is two, two in a row is three. Okay, and if I don't take one this turn, the last card in the top row will go away. Uh, that gives me double yellow, double red, double yellow, double red, double yellow. They're not all that great. And you'll see how some of the, some of the objectives require you to pay money and do a pattern match in your, uh, slots. I'm going to go, I think... And at the end of the game, you'll also get victory points, uh, as stated in the card. You'll get those if you bring them back from the hospital. And you will, um, uh, you, each time you bring them back from the hospital, you get those points. And if they're in the hospital at the end of the game, you don't get the points at all. So they're just kind of stuck. But I like my chances of taking her. So I'm going to go ahead and buy this one for three. And you can only buy them if you have a slot available of your three objective slots. So it's very important to remember. During your cleanup phase, you can discard an objective. But if you don't have a slot, you cannot take a card. So it's going to cost three money. Three money goes in. And we're going to rip through this one real quick. Cleanup phase. Waste any food that's left. There's none. Any water that's left. There's none. Uh, and then discard. Um, I can discard an objective. There is no objective I wish to discard. And we discard the rightmost card from each row. So one, two, and three. And at this point, these rows are empty. So the deck starts dwindling down as I fill them up with three new cards each. And I believe we only started with 39 cards in the draw deck because we separated out 33 at the beginning of the setup. And so we do not have a lot of cards to build through. Okay, so the next step is to secure districts. We cannot because as of now we have not surrounded any districts. And the step after that, if I have zero to four cards, I can refresh my hand and then carry out any checkmark actions. I don't have any checkmark actions yet accumulated, so there's nothing I can do there. And I can now discard, I mean, I cannot discard, I can take these, um, uh, take, these, take these in hand and I have to take the one with the most cards, which would be the middle row. So I have a choice here, I have a kind of tough decision to make. Do I want to, um, do I want to chance it? I've got a red card I can play next turn, so I can build up that pattern. I can chance that I'll get two more uh, 
be able to get four of a resource and be able to take that and invest now to go ahead and be able to bring cards up uh, faster, cycle my cards faster. The downside is I will have no cards for scouting unless I can complete an objective as well. Uh, and, I, and I won't because I'll have zero cards if I play all three of these. So um, it's a tough call, but I think I am going to go ahead and risk it and not draw cards yet. So that is the end of turn two. Keep moving. All right, so first step, roll our dice. So we pull these back, leave all our resources that are left. Roll the dice. Okay, now this is uh, one of the rules is that the um, dice have to come up with uh, three unique sides. And how that plays out is, so this one's not, this one is unique. These two are not. So I have to re-roll the ones that are not unique. Now, if this one of these comes up with a water icon, then I'll have to re-roll the water icons. Because the reason being is you can't choose, since there's different distributions of the dice, you, you're not free to choose which one you keep, knowing that something else better might come up. You have to re-roll the ones that match. Okay, so we got the same thing again. And now we're different. Okay, so we got, we got our documents, we got our water, and we got our resources. Okay, so we're going to plan our cards. And remember, I did not draw up cards last turn, so I'm pretty much stuck with what I got. Okay, so I've got a scout, which will give me a search marker. Oh, that's actually a, that's actually a good thing to have there. If I can get it with a knowledge, which I do have one knowledge. Uh, and then to try to get the yellow card here, I need... I need a um, I need medical, two medical, and a um, uh, supplies. But I also want to get four fuel, or two more fuel, to uh, to be able to bring that up too. So we are just going to have to see where we end up here. And I might not be able to make it, but let's take a chance. Okay, I know I can get this one, so we're just going to put these out. So this is going to give me my purple, purple, yellow, and yellow, which I need for this if I had 10 money. So I'm going to play that one there. I'm going to take the red one, and I'm going to put it in this column, because that will give me the pattern I want for later. And I'm going to throw the yellow into this pile here. And then we are done with planning our cards. We're going to deploy our resources, our volunteers and specialists, I should say. So these can be done in any order I want, and in this case, there's nothing critical about it. So well, let me do, yeah. So the yellow, I get to, I get to play two. Yellow is water, but I want the fuel. So I'm gonna move fuel over. I've got one transport token left, because I wasted one in the first turn. But that gives me my four fuel. And then I'm going to, Play my scout, which automatically gives me uh, two money. So I will claim the two money, first and foremost. But then I can also pay a fuel or a knowledge to get a uh, search marker. And I am going to take that search marker. I'm going to get the search marker. So I'm not going to waste one of my fuel because I need those, but I am going to go ahead and play the, uh, the knowledge. Right, and that's going to give me a search marker, a GPS marker it's called. All right, so I got that, I got my two money from her. And finally, I'm going to play this volunteer for double red. And I'm going to take those as what they are because I have no transportation markers. Now, I can at any time play a victory point for a transport marker, but I would have to move both of those. Um, I would have to move both of those around. I'm gonna wait. I think I can get, I can't get the, I can't get this yellow card right now. Anyway, even if I did that, and I'm gonna take my chances that I'll be able to get some medical later. So I'll go ahead and have the transport, side, the uh, supply side of it ready to go. Okay. So that is the end of 
deploying volunteers and specialists. We will now go to our objectives. Now during the during the objectives phase is when you deploy or you attempt to complete any goals. Goals that are here, here, goals that are over here on the plan card. You can't complete them anytime except in this phase. So good news is we are going to complete this objective. Discard four of any one resource, which I have here. And pattern match, uh, have, a, have, a, have a slot that is two blues and two reds. And I have two blues and two reds in this slot. So for that, I'm going to get the zero to six marker, which I pick up and I move onto the board up here. So in step eight, as long as I have under six cards, I can take cards back and I get 10 victory points. So we're gonna move from 12, from 10, or two, I can run math here, to 12. So I have 12 victory points toward my 75 victory point goal. So that is awesome. All right, we're gonna scout again. Now I do remember that right here, I had uh, a victory point marker. I also have a victory point marker here. I believe the lowest you can do is three, is four. So just because I had, and you have to have one uh, team member go on the assignment. This just represents data that they've ha they have that helps them get to a location. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and look. I'll just pick one again at random, and we'll just look at what's under it, and then go from there and put them back. So we have a six, we have an eight. We have six that would give us two supplies. We have an eight that would give us three medical. And if we had four, we could get one fuel. Okay. So, can't get any of those right now. So, they're going to go back where they were into the central location. And they do go face down, since I did not attempt one. Since I did not get one. So, they have to go back face down, so it kind of, again, becomes a memory game. New objectives. All right. So I only have two money, and I gotta decide if I want this objective here, uh, because the others have three in the row, so they're worth four points. So the trick here, the tricky situation here, is if I go ahead and take this one, I get it, right? But at the same time, what happens is this row will automatically get filled up immediately. Then, in the cleanup phase, we will rip the rightmost card out of each row. So it kind of, I get, I get a card, but at the same time, I end up cycling through one faster, I think. I haven't done the math on it, but that's what it seems like it's going to be to me, is that I'm going to cycle through this a little faster. So if I don't take this card, and don't buy a card this in, in the new objectives phase, this card is going to come out. That's a solo campaign rule. This card is going to get discarded, and then, um, and then at that point we'll have those cards, and then one, two, three will come out, and then that one will fill. But I think it still slows things down a little bit since I don't really have that much money, and I don't don't really want to go for that one right now. So I'm going to pass on buying a new objective. So as, since I did not buy one, this one gets discarded. And then we go to the cleanup phase. All right, cleanup phase, do we have any, I have no food or water that needs to be wasted for money. So that goes away. Uh, we do take the rightmost card of each row. And this is, this is the same way it plays in the regular game. It's always gonna happen during the cleanup phase. Keeps the timer going. So you don't fill up, you only fill empty rows. So we'll go one, two, oh, double yellow, double yellow. Go for yellow, three, no. Okay. Well, that's kind of good because if you can get the bank afloat, it cost you seven money and a pattern, you'll get this into your check mark area and you'll get a return. You can take three money. So it kind of gets you building up money. Um, okay, so. That is clean phase. The only other option is I can discard a, an objective, which I do not wish to do. Again, secure districts. There are no districts I can secure. 
And finally, the uh, redraw phrase. Now, if I have less than six cards, which I have zero cards, I can draw up, and I'm definitely going to draw up. I have to take the one with the most. This has four, this has five, this has three. So these will be, oops. So these will be my cards for the next turn. And I'll straighten those up in just a second. So that is the end of turn three. On to turn four. And we're going to roll the dice. Resource dice. See what we can get. Okay. We got a water and duplicate medical. So we roll medical. And we've got a medical and a fuel. So blue's fuel. Red medical. And yellow is water. Okay. Planner cards. So, to get rid of this, I need purple, purple, yellow, yellow. But I also need 10 money. I only have 2 money at the moment, so I've got to find a way to get 8 money. That is not easy to do right now before the objectives phase. I could get it if I had water, because with water, uh, food would be better. With water, I can... Uh, um, uh, I can sell one for one water, whereas food, I can sell one food for two money. But I don't see a way I can get much in terms of money in this phase. Uh, actually, wait a minute. I do, I think. These are the cards I have. I believe I have my banker. And I do have a resource. So I can get six, let's see, I can get six money out of her and a mechanic. And I got two, so I got eight but I won't have it enough for the objectives phase, but we're gonna go ahead and put her down. And we'll throw her in this slot here, I think. And I am going, oh, 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 oh this is gonna be good. All right, so I'm putting her there, okay? But one of the emergency plan options here is that if I have a purple, blue, yellow, yellow pattern in the slot, I can get five money. And I have purple, I have yellow, yellow, I just need a blue. And look, I have a blue card. So I can actually take, let's see what else I got here, just to make sure. So I'm gonna take this blue resource card and I'm going to put her here in that slot. And then I just have to decide what else I want here. And you know what? I think I can get this yellow card too. Because all I need is two medical. And medical is red. And I have a double red card. So we're going to throw that one right there. So we've now planned our cards. We're going to deploy our resources. So let's do this in order. Got the blue. So I'm going to put a blue resource on fuel. I don't care about that as much because I'm just, I know what I'm getting. It's more having that pattern. And we'll go ahead and flip this double red and put two resources on medical. And then we will flip her and we will get three money. One, two, three. And then I will go ahead and pay one parts from my collection and that will give me three more money which is what I was saying before would get me to eight. One, two, three. All right so we've deployed our volunteers and specialists and now this next turn we go to our next phase we go to objectives. All right so here we go we're time to rock. Time to rock this. So we're going to fulfill this first. We have a purple, blue, yellow, yellow. We have a purple, blue, yellow, yellow. So we're going to mark that we've completed that. We have to complete all three of these for the game anyway. And then we're going to get a nice fiber. All right. And now there's nothing that says you can't use that same stack to fill another objective. So we're going to come right here 
you know, here, you're going to pay my 10 money and my purple, purple, yellow, yellow, which I have. And I'm going to see one, two, three, four, five. So I'm paying my 10 money back to the bank. I've got my pattern. I'm going to get 10 victory points. So I'm going to go from 12 over to 22. And I get to remove this from the board. Just put off the board for now. And now I've got a fourth slot that I can play cards into on the next turn. So I've already achieved both of the power um, objectives of the game. And in the last scenario, this is these you have to achieve these two to win uh, as part of the win conditions. But I've already achieved them here for uh, for this turn. So that's awesome. So now I can cycle through my cards faster and play more cards each turn, which actually slows the growth of these. Anyway, talking too much. The last thing I can do is I'm going to try to achieve this, which means I need one parts and two medical. And I still have one part and two medical. So I'm going to discard those. And I get to bring her into my hand. Put those cards there. And I get to place a yellow location. So unfortunately now, even though it's a yellow location, I don't have a, I have a yellow location I can go to here. But I don't have a yellow location that suits my needs on the path that I'm on. But this region here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can encircle that one and secure it. Then that's worth 14 victory points as well. So you do have to be next to next to one. I don't have any. I don't want to pay any points right now for a uh, for a transport token. Um, so I'm just going to go, uh, do I, yeah, that's, I think I'm distracting myself. I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. So I'm going to, I'm next to this one. I can't put that there, but I can put it here. I can pay a transport token. And one of my anytime actions is to just pay a victory point for the transport for the one I skipped. And since I'm kind of early advanced on victory points, I'm going to go ahead and do that there. Okay, so that was good. We completed three objectives that turn. That's really good. So now we're in good shape for scouting. Because you remember we have a GPS marker which is worth three points. And I now have three points here, so I can get a, I can get a six. I need one that has uh, a, score, a um, victory point. Uh, type to it. So I think we saw one here. So I'm going to look at these again from last turn. And I was incorrect. Okay, screwed that up. That's okay. We're going to still go for it because I can get six points. So I'm going to put these two away. I don't need another fuel marker. So these now get to go back face up. You remember, since I'm taking, I'm going for one. So I need six points. I'm going to discard this for three. And I'm going to send these three volunteers on the mission. And uh, they're worth three points. So three for three points. Is, three plus three points is six. So I get this token. This goes into my collection. It's a different type. So it stays face up for now. And I do get two supplies. Now I have to determine which one of these goes to the hospital. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. So this guy goes to the hospital. And he goes up there. So we have completed our objectives and now we have completed our scouting phase. Next up, new objectives. Again, we got one here. It's not going to help me if I discard this. Now if I, if I fulfill this one. So what I was saying is it's not going to help me if I discard this card uh, by not buying one. It would get discarded, but it would get discarded in the um, 
cleanup phase anyway and refill the deck. I cannot buy that one any on this row because I only have three money, so I could buy one of these two. And I could buy this one. And I think that I'm going to go for this mechanic. I'm going to try for him because he gives me a purple location, which I need. But also, I can get, you know, playing him, I get four money. And if I discard a, uh, supplies, I get another four money. So I'm going to try to get him. And it helps that he's worth five victory points too. So I'm going to take him, add him over to my objectives area. And uh, this is going to slide over. So because we bought one, we don't have to discard a card. All right, so now we're going to clean up. I have no food and water to clean up. Discard these, the rightmost of each row. Refill immediately since they, since they did. Um, Empty out. Okay. And then uh, I can discard an objective if I want to, and I do not want to. So, in a cleanup, secure districts, still not encircled anything yet, uh, and that's fine. And then uh, refresh hand. Now I'm at, I'm at two cards, so I am going to refresh my hand. I don't need this one in play anymore, and it is five, one, four. So this is the one I have to take. Remember, on the next turn, I get to play four cards because I unlocked that slot. So that is the end of, I believe, the uh, fourth turn of Blackout Hong Kong, and. Uh, I think we will call this a video and come back uh, and we'll continue the game in uh, episode three. So thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!